Shan P and B on WSPR Radio with the latest and greatest interviews with people on and off campus and in the entertainment industry. And I am so happy to be sitting here with Stephanie Andujar. So, what people may not know, you actually spoke at St. Peter's University today. Yes. So, I you want to tell people a little bit about that? Yeah, I spoke at the uh, CLAC. Uh, I was a keynote speaker for the CLAC Department of Air for the Language Acquisition Department. Um, and I got to speak about how being bilingual has been influential in my career, and it was amazing. The students loved it, and I had a lot of questions regarding how I got into my career, and, you know, what kind of doors you have to break down, like, what's the process and everything, and it was pretty cool, you know, so I was just happy and honored to, you know, have the feel-good reception. Yes, now, for people that may have not gotten the chance to go to, um, the speaking engagement today, what do you think are the benefits of you being bilingual throughout your career? Well, I think it's definitely opened more doors for me as far as, obviously, there's more parts. I don't just have to stay locked into the New York State and English part. I can go to the Spanish part, and I can do an accent and do it with English. You know, if I have to speak English, I will a Spanish accent. I'll do both, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just opened up a lot of doors. There's a sense of when I did Orange is the New Black, character, they wanted to be Spanish speaking. Even though Barbara Rosenblatt, who was playing Miss Rosa in season one, they had no idea what she was. Oh, Honestly, there was no set, yeah, she's definitely a Cuban, like she's definitely not Cuban. There was nothing really set. And then that's when season two came and they had they just happened to expand her role and say, you know what, we'll make her Latina, we'll make her from Cuba and I said, Okay, whatever you guys want me to do, I'll work it out and I got down to Cuban accent. I worked with a boy a, a vocal coach on set and Oh, wow. You know, just, but reading in Spanish as well has helped me in there, too, because when you read in Spanish, like, or if you read any other language, you know, it's just going to make you more confident. Yeah. It's going to make you understand the words better and, you know, how to say it better. Yes, and of course, that scene was absolutely crazy. Now, there was a lot of different parts. Now, for people that are crazy on this new back plan, as I am, <laughs> now you had the robbery scene. You had the kiss after, the before yeah. and after, those poor guys. I felt so bad. Now, how was the initial process to get the gig for Orange is New Black? Well, I auditioned for them like three times. I oh, auditioned wow. for different roles. I auditioned actually for um, the Morello character. Oh, okay. by Al. Yeah. Which is, she's cool though. She's that part. dope. She made, she, yeah, she owns that character. Yeah. <laughs> so I auditioned for that one in the beginning, and that didn't go through. And then I auditioned for another part, some other role they had there, and another one. And then finally, um, Young Rosa's part came up, and I went in, and I said, all right, I'll just make it work. And I didn't know she was Cuban at that point. I just knew she had a Spanish accent, but I didn't know the details of it. So I just went in there with some other accent, and I just kind of <laughs> did the part, and I was like, all right, we'll see what happens. Because they were actually looking for someone in their 30s. Oh, wow. older looking, and luckily, Genji Cohen, who wrote, who writes uh, Orange is the New Black, she saw my audition, and she was like, that girl. Nice. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. So when you first found out, what was your reaction? Like, where were you when you found out? I, believe it or not, was riding, I was a member of City Bike at the time, and I was riding my City Bike home, and I was just riding, you know, and then I got off the bike, and I looked at my, my email, and I was like, ah, I got the part, my agent was like, Stephanie, you booked this, and I said, oh, I booked Orange, holy wow. crap, like, I was like, oh my god, what a good ride home. Yeah, <laughs> I know, you were like, pedaling real fast after, you like, well, you take a marathon, <laughs> lap around, let me go back to Brooklyn, come back. I, that was the same way I got when I found out I got the, the role in uh, Precious. Ah. I didn't quite find out yet, but I kind of did because when I went in for like my second audition, and now it's in front of Lee Daniels. Uh, and so, insane, and he just got honored. Yeah, at the BET honors. Yeah, man, crazy. he's doing his thing. Man. He's, you know, he's come a long way too, Lee Daniels. But when we, I remember when I went into the second audition, and I went up to him at first, and I was like, "Hey, what's up?" You know, like I didn't, because I really didn't know who he was either. So I was just mad cool. And then I, he was like, "All right, so you gonna do your thing?" I was like, "Yeah, I'll audition." Yeah. So I'm doing my lines, and he'll decide. And I was like, oh, my God, you want to tell me? Because he's real truly. He'll tell you, you know, honestly. <laughs> That's good, though. So at least so, you, like, you know what it is up front. Exactly. And then he goes, tell me what it goes for you. You know, you know what? I want you in my movie. I want you. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then he was like, can't say nothing yet. I got to see other girls. <laughs> but we'll see. But hopefully no one else rocks my world with you. I was like, I hope, wow. no, one, I hope no one else is, you know. <laughs> That's and crazy. I just remember, and I was at Pace at the time, Pace University. And I remember I had a class that night, and I was like, I ain't going to class. I'm going home. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> exactly. Just because I was excited, y'all. So always go to class, but, you know, 
gotta leave this with some pop. If something's popping, then you know you gotta go. Like, yeah, you, you <laughs> have to take that, take that L yeah. and do it. So how was it to find a balance like being a college student and being an actress? Like how was that for you? Oh, I was uh, when I was attending Pace. I would say my second year. Right, I think it was my second year. Um, or no, it was seven. So it was like my third year. Um, I had booked Law and Order SVU. I was in. The, it was in the summertime, so I was like, "All right, it's cool, you know." And then that was my first job, and then I got fresh students after, and that was during the fall semester. And I was like, "Oh wow!" Because I needed some time off for like yeah. a month or two. That's as long as a semester is really. And I was like, "You know what? I gotta let go of the semester, so I can film this film." So I, I let go of one semester just to film the film, and I went back the next semester. I just kept it going, wow. and I kept working and auditioning and school. And I would make a schedule. All right, I work in the morning. I go here for this, and I take an hour nap. Okay, now I gotta go back. I would just make it work. That is crazy. And then you still got <laughs> midterms, then finals, and everything in between. Uh-huh. You, just work. <laughs> you that burn is, that midnight oil. Out. Yeah, that is, oh my, I'm like in shock. Like, that's insane. It's a lot. But you just gotta hustle. You gotta grind. Yeah. I tell my brother that all the time. Like, you gotta burn that midnight oil. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what you have to do. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So now, going into that, Whitley Daniels, how was it for you to see yourself on that screen? It was amazing. Well, and amazing in a sense, it was amazing to see the overall product of, of the movie Precious at first, I would say, because uh, it was a while until we had seen it. Uh, we filmed it, it took maybe like a year or two. It was like two um, years really to come out when we saw it first at Sundance Film Festival. And when I saw it then, I just had I already, I just had a feeling and knew that this movie was special and it was going to go far. Like, I just knew it. You knew watching it. Yeah, from when I saw the way it was put together, I was like, oh my God, this is like... A masterpiece now you know like after yeah. you put everything together you know it was real cool i just couldn't believe it as far as like this is i can i would get a little funny watching my part all the time Why? I, I like to watch when somebody's born sometimes i'm like oh my god really i, I get it, like and you know i already know you have family sending you like oh i just saw your tv <laughs> today you're like oh now oh, no, i gotta no. watch it <laughs> yeah i don't mind it but i get a little like okay i can because i guess you always see something like you, know, you always critique yourself you're always your biggest the critic, critic you know, yeah like, Yes, yeah, so before we were talking about her role in Orange is New Black, we were talking about her as the role of Rita Romero in Precious. Now, with the roles that you have, you know, it changes to be a very light and fun character or it could be a dark role. So for Rita Romero, obviously that was more of a darker role. How do you, like, mentally prepare yourself for that? Uh, that's a good question. Um, when I get, when I was getting into character for Rita, that's when I would get a little melancholy, I guess. Like, I would get a little sad, you know, I would be a little and they had to see my teeth, and they were doing all these dramatic changes a little bit that was adding to the character. And obviously, if they're adding these things to my physical appearance, it's things that led up to her to look that way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was definitely you know there were times on set where it was like Ooh, it was draining, but then we always try to keep it light and try to get out of it as much as we could. Um, so getting into the character, it's gonna leave me in a state while I'm there for a while, but then when I'm not on set. I'm out of costume, then I get back to normal. Oh, okay. Normal that, me. Like, <laughs> that, that's good. I was reading that um, Cuba Gooden Jr., when he had the role of OJ, like, it took him a really, I think it took him, like, at least months to, like, get out of that state, like, emotionally, yeah. like, it was draining him. So that's good, like, you just, like, walk right out of set. Yeah, it's, it's true. For me, personally, for me, I, I, I just, I turn it on and turn it off. Like, that's, that's how it good. works for me, personally. Like, I know, I don't know how other people, you know, decompress after what they do, but for me, just, okay, turn it on right now, and then turn it off and leave that character there, pick it up, and that's it. That's good. So how did you research specifically, like, for Rita Romero? Rita Romero, um, it was more of a sense, like, I grew up, you know, I don't want to say in the hood, but, yeah, I grew up in New York City, and I grew up in, like, the, the 90s there. I've seen a lot of what she went through as far as, like, the heroin addict or the little junkie on the street or, you know, you're just going to know and you're, you're going to see these things and, you know, doing a little bit of research here and there, maybe going on YouTube see other more interview stories of mm-hmm. former drug addicts because Rita was a former drug addict trying to get her life together right. you know she met everyone in each one each one classroom it was like a second family because she wanted to be there you know to get the reading up you know what I mean? yeah like, open up a clinic for her mom you know? right actually it's funny too in that scene where I talk about I want to open up a clinic I improvise that whole scene because the lead oh wow he's a big fan of he'll whisper something in your ear tell you to do something and then we'll film oh. it and we'll just play with it and see everyone else's reaction and see it, you know the chemistry how it vibes and luckily that one scene we made it there because we're all actually writing in our journals as the character too oh like really you know, writing yeah we were really writing as like as if we were that character because we were so 
like, hey, write in your journals as Rita, as Jermaine, as, uh, uh, who was it? Joanna? Oh, yeah. So, you know, they'll be characters. Yeah. yeah. So, or Precious or anyone else. So, it was pretty deep. It was, uh, it was cool, though, man. It was just a really interesting experience. Yeah. Now, did you get a chance to, like, look, did you, after the world was over and everything was finished, did you look back at that journal? I mean, it over like, wow, like, this is really, like, how it's feeling. Yeah, I don't have the journal. I don't own the journal. It's funny. I don't have it at the now, but if I did look back at it now, I would be like, holy crap. Like, wow. <laughs> like, like yeah, I wrote all this. Like, I wrote that. I wrote this. Like, it, it's, yeah, it was about, like, whoa. And we actually had a watch. He had us watch um, Paris's journal. Oh, okay. He had us watch that. Because we would take place in the early 80s. Oh, God. And stuff like that. So we wanted us to see the New York grittiness of that time and capture that kind of, you know, attitude and flamboyancy that they play with certain characters. But, it, it, yeah, it was just a really cool experience. Yeah. That's good. Now, for people that may not know, like, the actual set life of an actor, I know some of you may have, like, a call time of, like, 4 a.m. or, like, yeah. and I still, like, that's how normal. <laughs> that's normal. Yeah. Okay. So, well, see, we're back up. We're back to getting hours of sleep. Now, because before the break, we were talking about, you know, how um, I'm not the best with um, waking up early. Oh, I'm, I'm know, good with it, but, you know, I like doing my seven to eight hours. Me too. You know, I like waking up early, feeling refreshed, but, you know, sometimes it's not like that. So, for um, you as an actress, how is it, like, at the call time? Like, what's the regular well, set schedule? Well, when I was, I just filmed a movie called Marjorie Pine. I just finished filming it earlier this year, coming out this year. Um, and it's with Gina Davis. She was in the movie Beetlejuice and some other movies. And Tim Robbins, he's in Shawshank Redemption. John Hamm, he's on Mad Men. Um, so I just shot that and we were shooting in Montauk while we were in Long Island. But yeah, the call times uh, were ranging about 4 a.m. Uh, I had a few call times at that time. I had some maybe at 5.30 a.m., 6 a.m. Uh, you know, you, you have to be on time. You have to be ready to go no matter what time. Uh, sometimes, too, you can do shoots, like, say we're shooting, we're starting to shoot for the first day at uh, 12 noon. That's considered breakfast time for the movie to begin with. So if really? you're starting wow. at 12 noon, they're going to have breakfast out available for you. Gotcha. And then lunch will be much later, like at 6 o'clock, it's going to be lunch. That's going to be served, wow. not dinner. So our time is <laughs> completely so, different. Yeah, the, the industry can definitely have a, I can say, like, a toll on your body physically because you have to kind of get adjusted. If you're going to be out shooting for certain things, you got to get adjusted. Certain shoots, like the other day too, I was just shooting for my one woman show. Nice. So I'm making one woman show actually. I'm producing with my family. Wow, congratulations! And like productions. Uh, yes. And um, I play a bunch of different characters. One thing, Bony Ray Ray. He's like, Yo, what's up? I come from the hood. I just wanna like let my people know, Yo, what's up? Shout out, hey. You know, he's that dude that's on the block always trying to give you advice. Right. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. And then there's the uncle. I'm playing my uncle. He's like, Yo, I'm here to pick up my uh, my, my nieces. Uh, Oh, stuff, uh, okay, yeah, oh my god, I'm, 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 I'm gonna watch my bed watch. That sounds yeah. like mine too. <laughs> yeah, like, that was my uncle growing up. And then I'm playing myself, I'm playing a bunch of different characters, and we just got, I got up at like 7 a.m. the other day, because I had to wow. get up early, I have to shoot, you know, they, especially if you need these shoots, if you have to do a shoot where the sun's coming up, you gotta get you up gotta early, get you it, gotta yeah. make it work, and you know And throw those extra and, effects in, yeah. yeah. I know how you feel, when I was a student, so I used to always get to sleep. When I had to do an internship at Pace, I had to be at that internship at 6.30 in the morning. Ooh, God bless. So, you know, with the business, though, you have to, whatever time they tell you to be there, it's a job. Like yeah. anything else in this life, if you got to be there a certain time, you got to show up. You got to be there. You got to beat the coffee, eat your oranges, you know, whatever you got to <laughs> do. Take five minutes. You just got to get it through. You know, your bed will be there later and you just crash. So yeah. <laughs> that's true. Now, I know for some actors, actors, they have, you know, they'll add physical weight to their body or they do certain things. Would you ever do that? If it was necessary, I would. I would do it. I, I grew out my eyebrows a lot for, um, uh, you know, grew them out really thick. I had to go back to my old catalog. Oh. <laughs> but I was okay. Um, I mean, if there's anything I have to keep for authenticity, you know, or do for the character, I'll definitely do it. I have no problem with that. Like, I'm, I like going to, I like working out. So if I have to gain weight, fine. If I have to lose it, if I have to gain it too. Whatever I have to do to make the role, you know, authentic to deliver it to the audience. Right. Is there something you would, like, someone asked you and you would say absolutely no, like, this is not it? Um, what, as far as, like, taking certain parts? Yeah. I get, like, for me, it really depends. If, if, if the role fits me, you know, like, if, if it's something I can vibe with and I feel like, yeah, yeah, I feel good. Because that's how I feel about certain parts. Like, when I read Precious, boom, I knew it. Knew it, yeah. When I read Warren, boom, I knew it. When I read Now Marjorie Prime, the role in Pike, boom, I just had a feeling, you know, because I feel like I can be connected. I feel like for certain actors, if, if, there's not something you can 
bring it to the character, or you don't know how you can relate, just don't play that character. You're not going to make it authentic. You, know, you have to kind of relate somehow to the character. And I always yeah. feel like some kind of actors sometimes bring truth to those characters. Sometimes. That's true. Now, I know for um, growing up, like, doing this, what you wanted to do, did your family support you at first, or, like, you had to convince them? No. my It was funny. My mom, when we moved to the project to live in Chelsea, we were younger. I was about, like, 11 or 12 years old, and my mom was with me in the after-school program. And I was like, I want to go to the I want to go home and eat and cook people. After I go to school, oh, like, <laughs> we all want to do it, you know? And she's like, no, you're going to go up the streets. You're going to go there. You can dance. And I was like, fine. So there, actually, I started singing and dancing and acting, and then that's when I did the Wiz production. I was a scarecrow. Aww. It was cool, and I did that for maybe two years with them, and then I got discovered in that program by a talent manager. Oh, wow. And then that's how, from then on, things just started changing. I went to the performing arts high school in the city, and then, then but I went to Pace to learn business at the same time, because I'm managing and kind of running my own self here at the same time as, like, yeah. the CEO, you know? Yeah, that's good. That's so it works out perfectly in the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, what is the, I know a lot of people talk about, like, SAG, like, being a part oh, of the it. the union. Yeah, the union. So, like, how is it to get a part of it? Do, like, people reach out to you, or, like, can you sign up for it? Uh, well, now it's called SAG after, because they merged the union. Uh, oh, okay. After was its own union, and SAG was its own, but then they merged, which is weird. Uh, and with SAG, after, it, you have to do a certain amount of hours and work in the business to then be considered and to get notifications and to be invited. Okay. And then from then on, so you have to do like three jobs, like three big ones, and then they say, okay, you're invited now. If you want to join, then you decide if you want to join or not. And then you just got to keep doing union work, you know, the best you can. Now, once you do, you, you can't do anything outside of union work? Like, you have to stick with that? Yeah, you have to stick with fucking union work. Like, my project I, that I'm producing now is union work. Like, I got to oh, wow. like union. I made sure I'm like a producer on it because, you know, I'm, I'm in the union, so I want to be able to act in my work, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or have any other SAG after, uh, you know, act. Yeah, so now let's talk about the One Woman Show. Yes. Now, how, what made you uh, have the thought to put all that together? Well, my it? sister, uh, Melanie, she's a graphic designer. She, she owns her own uh, line called Vision Apparel. And she was like, Seth, you know, you should do uh, like a One Woman Show. Like, you know, you play all these characters really well. You should just make it talk about the family. And I was like, yeah, maybe you're right, maybe you're right. Then I started thinking about it. Like, you know, right, how do I want to structure it? How do I want to do this? And kind of like mapping out my journey in the acting business, along with all these zany characters who I met along the way, who influenced me, who supported me. So it's kind of like a mashup of like John Leguizamo with like Tracy Holmes. Mm -hmm. Nice. You know, just mashed up with the comedy and just kind of revealing my little bit about my background with my family at the same time. I get to play all these different characters. <laughs> so, so how did you like choose which ones you wanted to be like? I'd be like you, your family, like which ones you knew. Okay. Which character? Yeah. Um, well, the ones I guess that stood out to me the most, and I'm starting it from a certain time in my life, and then because what I'm doing is the first show will be about 45 minutes to an hour long, so it's like a, I would say kind of like a TV movie. Oh, okay. Like a web movie in a way. Nice. And then there's gonna be another web movie that'll be like a part two to the first characters you met, and then the second one's gonna be a different character. Like they made a French one with a really good. <laughs> you know, they get a really good bad bitch and a stupid ass bitch. <laughs> so it's nice. gonna pop out, you know. <laughs> yes, that's so dope. So when are they gonna be out for everyone? In the summer. I'm yeah. gonna put a trailer out soon. There's gonna be a trailer coming out soon. As soon as I'm in pre production now actually. Oh okay. I'm filming now. And then it's gonna come up and then hopefully by the summer I'm gonna come out with the one woman show. You guys will be able to see it. Yes, I cannot cool. wait to see it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be cool. awesome. Yeah. Do you have an audition ritual, like anything you do before your audition starts or after you know, go to different restaurants? Me personally, I'm more just like, oh, I just gotta get this. I wanna, I wanna just get all my nerves out. I wanna get the nerves out. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh. yeah, and I breathe. think that's what I'd always do. I just, afterwards, <laughs> I'm like, oh. like, <laughs> like yeah. I'm always, yeah, I'm always like in the character before I go. I'm always thinking of little things I can do. You know, I'm always in my head. And then afterwards, oh, I'm bad. I can do a cold pizza. Like I just feel happy <laughs> afterwards. I, no specific ritual, just more of maybe getting, you know, when they always, like, I, I, want, I don't want to sound corny, but the teachers are like, do your thinking cat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's where I go. I go, okay, and then I just go in there. And then <laughs> like tunnel vision. Like, yeah, yeah, like tunnel vision. Yeah, that's all it really is, just gaming myself up to go and do my thing and never take it personal. If it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, then it's not. And there have been roles I've auditioned for where I may know it's not really for me, mm -hmm. but I go because you never know what they're looking for. They might want 
an African American or they might want a Latina or they might want an Asian, but they'll see everyone across the board. Just have options and whatever the producers want, you know, that's another thing too. Gotcha. Now, do you go in there with every audition with a monologue prepared, or they like usually send you a script? Oh no, yeah. You in the early beginner, if you're like a beginner beginner and you're trying to be an agent or something, you might go in there with a monologue because you're new and they want to see you do something that if they haven't seen you before. Um, but for me now, for quite a while, it's been I'll get called in for roles and they'll say, "Hey, Sam, you want to see this part?" And they have an appointment with me and the producer. Like, okay, send me the part, send me the role. I read through it. Through me and then I can memorize the lines, whatever lines they supplied me. Uh, actually, there's another little tip I give you. I audition. Sometimes you won't get lines. You get them through dubs. And that happened to me for Star wow. Wars. I auditioned for Star Wars. Oh, wow. And it was very unrealistic, you know, because they don't want anything coming out. Now, in this time, day and age, you can't have anything in the theater. Right. right. So you go in, they were like, hey, this is the lines right here. Pull through this thingy. You know, this is where you oh, wow. So they weren't playing. They weren't playing. I only had like an hour to get it down and memorize it stuff like because you can't even go in an audition just put the lines or read through dogs. you have to know oh you can't even do that anymore it, no you, you should have them either in your hand or somewhere in your back pocket you know somewhere you feel comfortable but you have to have the material you know because that's how it is on sets they don't have time for you to waste or for you to learn your lines or to no you should know your lines by the time you go on any set be prepared be ready because that's what they want they just want you to be ready there's no rehearsal wow. you know you go and Maybe a five minute rehearsal, but that's a rehearsal just to get your spot. Like a table read, in a sense? You can do a table read, but that's in the beginning of production oh, before okay. you film. But once you're ready to film, you're now at the beginning of production. Uh, they'll call you to set, and when you're ready, you're ready, and then you'll be doing it. But rehearsals, like maybe five minutes, that's just to know where you are. Like, okay, you're going to be sitting here, Shantia, you're there, Shantia, okay, boom, 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 we're going to do this. All right, let's start filming. Wow. You just got to know everything. You have to know your stuff. It, it's kind of like when you enter college. In college, you do your syllabus, you have to have your responsible now for everything turn in the same thing with this wow that's crazy uh, <laughs> that's like the real deal so when you get you book a job do you get the script like as soon as you know about it or like they'll send it like you know like a month before um you start filming? um it really depends uh, like tv world is very fast uh in the tv business you don't have much time you can do an audition today and you'll know by tonight whether or not you know you're going with wow. it and then they'll forward you a script you know as soon as possible the next day or whatever it is um you just go with it. It's film, it's a little different. Uh, film, they take their time. It's a little more intimate depending on what you're doing in film, but they'll take a little more time uh, because film is just different. It's canceled a little differently. Um, so you'll get a little more of a, of a buffer time, you know, to absorb the script and to absorb the characters and things like that. But then when you, you got to be ready for it. Like, they'll give you your time, but when you better, you just you better, better be ready. You better come yeah. correct. <laughs> <laughs> come correct, come with everything, dot your I's and cross your T's. Right, have them set for good. <laughs> oh my goodness! What was the shortest amount of time you ever had to memorize a script before? Like a full-on script script? Uh, no, not full-on script. Yeah, they're not that intense. Like, <laughs> not that crazy. Like, yeah. By tomorrow. Please, I'll say, yeah, not full script. Yeah. Um, no, I with Orange, I only really had like two weeks to prepare. I didn't wow. really have a, a lot of time. I I found out the next day. I'm already all right. Wardrobe being here. Blah blah blah. blah. We can get you know meet her. You can blah blah. blah. It was just oh, like you got a chance to meet her, too? Yeah, I got to meet oh, her on good. set to watch her work, like, oh, to see her nuances and characteristics, and then she came on set when I was filming for one scene, and we got to meet that way. Oh, so that's it was good. Cool. You know, yeah, so it was nice, and because when I filmed my flashbacks, they were more, it was more like a mini movie. To yeah. Me. It was like, yeah, like, I was the lead of it, and here are my men, you know, like, they'll go to this job, oh, mom, this fucking guy, you know, like, <laughs> I can't curse on camera. But, you know, yeah, you know, so I just got to be more like me and him, you know, this thing. Right. So it was fun, you know, so I was like, this kind of like a lead in its own, you know, so I just took it and ran with it. Like, How did it feel to do like a bank robbery in a sense, or in a movie? Like? It was, I think it was, it was exciting just because I'm a very active person, so when it was whole like, you know, run out the door. To get to load the gun. Yeah, to load the like, gun. And I was like mad, and I was like, oh, but I said, I meant that for this all, but don't get that, you know, I was just going off on him. And oh man, but it was exciting. I was, I was having a lot of fun, you know, like just going everywhere and I fell, I didn't really care. I was like, I don't care if I hurt myself. Like, oh, so they, they didn't really care. Yeah, I was just, because I was excited, you know, because I'm being like a female, too, who's like taking charge. You always feel Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were definitely taking charge of all the guys, and then they already came back from jail and talked to you, yeah. and then you were still taking charge. I mean, I would never condone that, by the way. No. But it felt cool, you know, but it felt just cool, just like, 
it was it was also bittersweet because like her husband fought for the truth of the trade, mm-hmm. and and then she's like, you know what, I'm just gonna keep going on here. Then get to where the money is. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Somebody had to satisfy her needs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, were there any time where like you had a role and you saw a bit of yourself in the role? Did that ever happen to you? Or not? Um, I mean, I can be a little aggressive like that. You know, all these old men, you know, out there, you know, they're like, yo, some truth is Yeah, <laughs> first of all. Yeah, first of all, Steph, don't get it to you are though. Um, maybe a little young, just, just as far as um the aggressiveness and maybe taking on a leadership role. My mom always tells me that. Mm. That's a good one. So how do you find a balance between, like, personal and professional? How do you find time? Hmm, trying to, it's like trying to delegate time to certain things. You know, like trying to organize yourself and know, like, all right, I'm gonna spend. You know, sometimes yeah, I get up like maybe like seven a.m. just to like start my day, or even earlier just to start. Cause I have to do this, I have to do that. Like, just time management. I'm trying to stick to it as best as I could. Yes. <laughs> Without getting like the. Oh, I need to sleep. <laughs> right. Let me just chill out. Yeah, let me just chill out. I try to relish those moments when I'm busy. To just you know stop and you have to keep going. And then if you got downtime, then. Yeah, so when you do a role, like, how long does it last, like, that whole part? Like, is it, like, a two months of a period, like, it's dedicated be. to that? It could be maybe two months, or it could be less than that. It really depends on how fast my project is moving. Um, yeah, I would say it really depends on where it's moving. It could be long, or it could be short. You just gotta roll with it. Just roll with it. You know, just keep yourself wet for the wood. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, are there any, um, when you saw a person on set, you were like, Oh my goodness, am I really working with this person? Have yeah, you had those? Yeah, I've had a few of those. Um, well, Liam Neeson, when I worked with him, like a walk among the scenes, I was at a small part in there, but he's interrogating me for a scene. It was like a thriller kind of movie. It came out in 2014, and I worked with him, I got to meet him, and he's like, oh my god, where did I meet you? How was it? And I was like, oh, it's nice to meet you. And we're shooting our stuff, and he goes, you have already done a few roles. And I was like, yes, I have actually. I have a few roles. And he's like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah, he's like, what have you been in? And I was like, I was in the movie Crash. He's like, Precious, oh my god, I was supposed to work with Lee Daniels on the butler, but I had no time. I, no time. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, okay, that's cool, you know, <laughs> here we are just talking about Lee Daniels, or you know, talking about yeah, all the colleagues know. and stuff, yeah. And then he shouted me out to the director, like, he was mad cool, you know, like, he was like, Scott, do you know the system from Precious? <laughs> uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, I did, that's all I can. I was like, all right. Like, <laughs> no, that's crazy. But he was mad cool, though, he was like, this is good for for you, and I'll see you down the road, and I was like, okay, I'm nice, nice. Yeah, he, yeah, he was mad cool, like, you know, he wasn't stuffy, he wasn't, like, just come and go, you know, like, he was mad cool, um, now the project two, Marjorie Prime, you're working with the actors there, they were really cool, Jamie Davis and all of them, and they were just mad, like, all these actors I've seen, you know, like, coming up as a little girl, and they have these aspirations, and now I get to meet them and work with the girl, and they have these aspirations, and now I get to meet them and work with them, and I'm like, you need to yeah, no, like, switch it up now. No, yeah, I'll switch it up. TV. I can't be, I can't be like a fangirl with that. I can be like, it's my car. It's my car. Even though I'm a fangirl inside. Right, like inside, <laughs> yeah, you're inside, like ready to be back, yeah. ready to run down and back. Like, it's like okay, yeah, hi, how are you? And seeing him, I'm not going to switch. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. So, what would you tell a person that wants to go into the business and be in the shoes that you're in? Oh man, have perseverance and always believe in your confidence for yourself. Always. Yeah, <laughs> or Selena has said that, you know. Um, but yeah, just to have no mercy and just to keep going and believe in yourself. Like I'm like, I'm gonna do this. Like, <laughs> yeah, always. No, yeah, mm-hmm. stay focused. Do you do what makes you happy as best as you can? Don't always let money be the the main result. It'll come, but don't let that be the driving force because if it is, I don't think you'll be happy. But try to try to find what makes you happy. <laughs>